and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the new champion tier list. We're going to be taking all nine of the brand new champions coming to Legends of Runeterra here in Beyond the Bandlewood, the new expansion that will be out tomorrow. And we're going to place them in a tier ranking system from S to D, somewhere in there, S being the best, D being the worst. Um, but, you know, these are still champions. None of them are bad cards, even if it, you know, they do end up on a D tier. And so here's our nine champions uh, going across the board. And we're going to go ahead and, and talk about them, discuss them in the order that they were revealed to us uh, throughout the, this preview season, which has been the last couple of weeks. So the first champion here was Poppy. That's our first champion. So Poppy is going to be a Yordle, and it's part... Bandal part Demacia, so you can play it in either Bandal decks or Demacia decks, and it's a multi-region uh, champion, which will help out in, in different champions like Tristana that we'll get to later. So it's a 4-mana four 4-3 four, that has the attack ability that grants me and all allies with equal or lesser power than me, plus 1, plus 1. So even though Poppy is just a 4-3 to start with, whenever Poppy attacks, immediately a 5-4, and then of course gives that plus 1, plus 1 buff to everything else as well. That's a pretty powerful ability, uh, get, granting plus one, plus one to basically your entire board, except for if it's bigger than Poppy. That can be a that can be quite, quite strong. So let's see, it levels up whenever it has attacked with allies three times. That's going to be a difficult level up. If you think about like Misfortune's level up, Misfortune levels up with just, um, you know, just attacking four times, like it just sees you attack four times. This is Poppy has to attack the three times, but also you have to have other allies also attacking with Poppy. So that makes it a little bit more difficult, like a Cataclysm type card that just has your champion attack or just any card, you know, has it attack. That would not help uh, level up Poppy because there'd be nothing attacking alongside with it. All right, anyway, let's get to the leveled up. So when it is leveled up, of course, you get the plus one, plus one from the level up. Then Poppy gains impact, which is a brand new keyword. And also attack, you grant me and all allies with equal or lesser power than me, plus two, plus two. So that's huge. And impact. And so you grant them all impact as well. So impact is ability that if it's blocked, however much impact it has, it will do that much damage to the enemy nexus still, even if you block it. So it's kind of like a little variation on overwhelm, kind of like overwhelm mixed with like sand soldier type stuff. It's a pretty cool little ability. Your impacts can stack. So Poppy has impact to begin with, but if po leveled up Poppy does, but when level up Poppy attacks, it says grant me impact again. So it should have impact too, whenever you know it, it attacks with it being really large, and then of course everything else you have will have impact also. Basically, leveled up Poppy will end game super fast. That plus two plus two to everything and everything having impact that's going to just end games really really fast. But like we mentioned, it will be difficult to level up Poppy. But if you can, you'll probably win the game. So overall, I think Poppy is going to be a pretty decent champion, but not not like absolutely amazing. Um, you know, it has like some downsides. Like there's no keywords to begin with. You have to attack with Poppy to get that ability. So if they have like a good blocker, um, <clears throat> you know, you're going to have to have like your spells to help support your Poppy and make it easier for Poppy to attack. But combining Poppy with like challengers and having those challengers get plus one, plus one, so they can trade up, that's gonna be very nice. Combining Poppy with Tristana, that we'll talk about later, is gonna be a very nice combination. And just overall, I think Poppy can just do a, a pretty decent amount of stuff. Um, so I think it's a, a pretty good champion. Like, four mana in Demacia doesn't really have champions right now. There's no four mana champions that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, and of course it has that versatility though, because you can play it as a Demacia champion or you can play it as a Bandal City champion. And so if you don't r understand what that means, it's basically like you can put this in a Bandal City deck or a Demacia deck. So you can play Bandal City plus Ionia. You can play those two regions and Poppy can be in your deck. Or you can have a Demacia plus Noxus deck and you can play Poppy in that kind of deck also. So, uh, so that just gives it some extra versatility. And chat saying a couple of things that could be really good with Poppy is Elusives. And yeah, that could be like Demacia, Ionia, Elusives. Maybe like Zed and Poppy uh, being pretty aggressive there. And it, it can buff up your Zed, which is very nice. Um, you know, you could have something like that. Or maybe with Shen, where Shen can help protect your Poppy. And then Poppy will again buff everything else up, including your Shen. 
yeah, so there's there's definitely some good things to support like that. Now, also, just, just to let you know, this, this does say attack grant me and all allies plus one plus one. That happens at the same time. So it's not, don't you don't just give poppy plus one plus one, so now it's five, and then check anything that's equal or less than five. It would be the first time equal or less than four for that first one. Anyway, overall, probably, you know, just fine. Pretty decent, but nothing special. I don't think, I don't think this is going to be a champion that will be like at the top tier of the metagame um, dominating the metagame or anything like that. But I think it's going to be just like a nice little champion that will have, they'll see, see a wide variety of decks um, and some play. So we're going to put Poppy at the C tier. I think that's where we're going to go with, with Poppy. It's going to be our first champion. It's going to be a nice C tier champion. Our second champion was Caitlyn. Let's take a look here. We got three mana, three, three, quick attack, strike, plant two, flash bomb traps randomly in the top 10 cards of the enemy deck and levels up whenever you've had five of your traps have been activated. So those flash bomb traps, they go in the top 10 cards. They're just like the, the poison puff caps. Um, with them, they're, they're going to be whenever your opponent draws them, it does one to a random ally that they, that they have. So it's just going to do one to a random unit. Um, so is that going to be as good as like one Nexus damage? You know, it kind of depends, right? You know, sometimes it will be, sometimes it won't. But you know, for the most part, Caitlyn's going to be a, a three mana, three, three quick attack. And so I think that's that's honestly just a, a nice, strong baseline to have for the beginning of the champion. So levels up whenever you've had five of your traps have been activated. And of course, how easy that will be will, you know, help determine how good Caitlyn is. But let's see, whenever Caitlyn does level up, um, you know, gets the plus one, plus one and has strike now you're planting four traps in the top 10 cards instead of two you're planting four and uh then you also whenever every time caitlin strikes you also deal damage to the enemy nexus equal to the number of traps activated this round so that could just be like one damage maybe two damage you know if you did activate like five traps this round <laughs> you know the game's probably over at that point but all right so, you know, like not an amazing strike ability, just making those flash bomb traps. But I just think that the Caitlyn's going to be a nice, strong champion just basically on the, the baseline. Three mana, three, three quick attack. So you can think of Draven, right? That's exactly the same stats that Draven has. Three mana, three, three quick attack. Now, Draven is, is summon and then strike is creating those, those spinning axes. And Caitlyn instead is striking and planting flash bomb traps. So, you know, there's a little bit of a difference there. But still, I think Caitlyn should be pretty strong, just like Draven is. You know how it's so difficult to block Draven. Now, one thing that does make Draven really difficult to block is that Spinning Axe is threatening for power any time that, that Draven's attacking. Caitlyn won't have that ability. But of course, Caitlyn can um, be used as, you know, can have a little bit of removal also alongside of it with like those trap steal and damage to the um, opponent's allies. So I think Caitlyn's gonna be a similar champion to Draven. I think Draven's gonna be a stronger champion. However, if we were putting Draven on this list, I think we put Draven on S tier, right? Cause he, you, Draven's really good and it is at all sorts of decks, all sorts of tier one decks. And so even if Caitlyn's not quite as good as Draven, I think it's gonna be close enough that Caitlyn deserves to be in a pretty high spot on the tier list, just basically because the comparison to Draven. And so we're actually going to put put Caitlyn all the way up into the A tier. Like I said, I, I think it's going to be worse than Draven, but I'm going to put it all the way up there. I'm going to you know have some good respect for just a three mana three three quick attack with upside that does you know just does some extra stuff. Because um, I also think that Caitlyn can be very versatile, just like Draven. That you can put Caitlyn with a lot of different champions. Um, Teemo is an obvious one because Teemo helps you with with some different traps with getting more puff caps But even just some slower control decks like with Vi or Ezreal or you know, whatever other regions you want to put in I think Caitlyn can just be a, a good three drop that um, You know helps out and you know, even like a Swain, you know, it can can get, like have those flash bomb traps do extra damage I think you can just you know kind of help out and yeah, it's just if it's a nice part of the curve and it's in a very good region and I think it's going to be pretty good. So we're going to put Caitlyn as our first A-tier champion. Our third champion was Vagar. And Vagar has a new kind of mechanic introduced. So four mana, one four. All right, so we got like Maokai body. We got two different regions that we can have Vagar be in with Bandle or Shadow Isles. That's definitely a plus because um, just the versatility of that, you know, being able to put it in all sorts of different decks, that's very good. 
and let's take a look at this ability. When I'm summoned, you create a darkness in hand if you don't already have one. And then round start, grant your darkness everywhere one extra damage. So darkness is going to be, let's see if it's if it's on here. I could check that. No, Event Horizon. There we go. Darkness is going to be just a slow spell, three mana, deal two to an enemy. So, you know, not, not like fantastic, but if you're just creating that for free, nothing wrong with that, right? You know, it's just Mystic Shot, but slow speed and, and add a mana. All right, you know, we'll, we'll take that. And, and when it says enemy, that's those are only enemy units, not the enemy nexus. But then this this ability here is going to be key. Round start, grant your darkness everywhere one extra damage. And that's a this this whole thing is pretty important because there's a lot of ways to create darkness um, with the, just all the different uh, cards they've released from this expansion. There's going to be a good amount of both Shadow Isles and Bandle City cards that allow you to create new darknesses. Um, you can even make them cost less and things like that or add in extra damage. And so Vagar will, whenever has the summon ability to create one darkness by itself, and you know you, uh, you can hold on to it or you can cast it to be able to create more with other cards. But yeah, granting that darkness everywhere one extra damage, because even just one extra damage, three mana deal three is pretty nice, right? Like that's your MK3 in, in order to do that. And then you know if you have a three mana deal four, deal five, deal six, you know, like we're talking a lot of damage from these darkness. So that's a pretty nice ability. Now the thing is is Vagar can only sum like only creates one singular darkness by itself when it's summoned. So you're really gonna have to put Vagar in a deck that has a bunch of other darkness support. Because to level up, you need to deal 12 damage with darkness. And that can be you know multiple darknesses, not just like one singular darkness for 12 damage, multiple. But Vagar itself can only create the one. So you'll have to have other ways to create darkness. But let's say we've leveled up Vagar. So we've leveled up Vagar. Now we have Grand Overseer Vagar. So we got a, a, a lot better title. We you know, have this huge, huge body. This art's really cool. Uh, when I'm summoned and round start, you know, he's just in there in this big machine thing. When I'm summoned in round start, create a darkness in hand if you don't have one. So now instead of just summon, also round start, you're creating more darkness. You just get to um, kind of like Aphelios when Aphelios is leveled up. You're going to be able, like how you, you want to get the moon weapon out of your hand because round start, you're going to make a new moon weapon. Kind of the same thing here. You're going to want to get the darkness out of your hand and cast it because you're going to create a new one. And also round start, you're granting that darkness everywhere an extra damage. And then those darkness can target anything. So they can target the enemy nexus at that point. So pretty awesome little champion here. I really like how it's four mana. We've seen with Shadow Isles that five mana slot is really um, saturated with lots of good champions at five mana. Vagar is here at four, just only has like Maokai as like the only thing there at four. I could see Vagar, you know, you're gonna want to build around it with a good amount of darkness stuff, but I could see it going in a variety of different decks. Obviously you can just play these two regions together, but you could also play it with just Bandle or just Shadow Isles. There's probably enough um, with, with each of those, maybe. Um, yeah, and we're going to have another, our next champion, Senna, is going to be another Darkness champion. And those two are really built to go along uh, together, Vagar and Senna. So I'm pretty happy with Vagar here. I think Vagar uh, is a good little card here. That This whole Grant Your Darkness Everywhere, one extra damage every single round start is really powerful. And it's going to be a champion where your opponent's like, I got to get that Vagar off the battlefield because they can't have the Darkness just keep on getting more and more damage. Because then you're, you're just making you know, basically three mana um, uh, vengeance, <laughs> you know, basically at some point, like where it's just going to be just uh, doing enough damage to just kill everything. So pretty cool champion here. I'm going to put Vagar. I think that I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this darkness stuff. I'm going to put Vagar all the way up to the B tier. I think it's, I think it's a nice, solid mid-level champion. Um, you know, it, cause it, you do need to build around it. So it's not, you know, it's not going to be able to fit everywhere and it's a little slower and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's not going to be like an S tier champion or anything like that. But I think it's going to be a good, solid uh, control champion. So let's put Vagar at B tier. And the other Darkness champion here was Senna. That was the other one that we were just talking about. So Senna is a 5 mana, 4-4 four, four quick attack. When I'm summoned or when I attack, you get to create a Darkness in hand if you don't already have one. So that's important because it still it still has the summon created darkness just like Vagar, but then also every time Senna attacks, 
you get to create another darkness. So that's just going to be more ways to be able to gain card advantage and, and be able to create darknesses, being able to have one card create multiple darkness. That's pretty strong. Then it also has this clause, your damage and kill spells accelerate to fast. So that means that any kind of uh, slow speed removal spell that you have is now going to be fast speed. So we're talking about like go hard, um, thermogenic beam, ruination, uh, crumble, you know, those kind of spells, those are going to now be fast with Senna in play. And of course, more most importantly out of all those, darkness. Darkness is slow speed. Normally, darkness will be fast whenever Senna's in play. That's a cool little ability, but I think that's an ability that a lot of people are overrating because most all Shadow Isle spells that are played right now are already fast speed. And it's nice to have the darkness turn into fast speed, but I don't think we're really going to necessarily play a whole lot of other like slow speed spells. Um, and so I just don't think that it's going to have that big of an impact. It's it's nice, but it's I think there's a lot of people that are overrating that ability right now. All right, so Senna has for leveling up, I've seen you slay three units with spells or an allied Lucian die. So for the most part, we're probably playing Senna with, with different spells that will uh, hopefully slay. And then whenever we level up Senna, now it you know gets that plus one, plus one. And then when I'm summoned or attack, create the darkness in hand still. But then your damage and kill spells not only accelerate to fast, but they also cost one less. So that's pretty nice. So they all, you know, all those spells cost one less. So, you know, pretty, pretty decent champion here. Nothing wrong with Senna. However, five mana, they're especially just Shadow Isles, five mana and just Shadow Isles, you're going to have a ton of competition. We're talking Viego, we're talking Thresh, we're even talking Kindred. Um, and so it's, it kind of, I think you can play Senna with Vagar, you know, when you want all this darkness stuff. But if you're not playing Vagar, it's kind of hard to see where you're playing Senna, to be honest. I know some people are saying, like, maybe Senna Lux, we can make uh, the final sparks, make those fast speed, or other spots. But just those other Shadow Isles champions that I named at five mana. In five mana, there's, there's, so much competition even if we think about like senna lux and demacia you're gonna have like radiant guardian even screeching dragon you're gonna have some awesome five mana cards you're gonna to want to play and so i think it's kind of hard to play senna the the whole like they they cost one less like that part's pretty nice but i don't know because think about kindred okay kindred doesn't see very much play right now people talk about how like kindred needs a buff kindred needs to be more powerful kindred's also a five mana four four quick attack just like senna let's say we're playing like a, a lux you know, deck, like, are we playing Kindred or Senna? Like, well, Senna's, the thing I really like about Senna is that it does create the card advantage for you whenever it's summoned, it has the darkness, but, like, attacking is not that easy. Think about, like, when you play Kindred decks, like, how much you attack with Kindred. You do, you do attack some, but it's not that easy to just attack with four fours at five mana, because usually your opponents are playing larger things at five mana, like Screeching Dragon or something like that. So it's not always easy to attack. Um, but then Kindred just slays things for free, right? Like, it can just kill weakest allies. It just keeps slaying stuff for, for, for free and, and very easily, especially you build around Kindred. Whereas Senna, all Senna is going to really be doing is create a 3-mana 2-2, two, two, you know, deal 2 damage, and then make some, some spells be fast speed. I kind of like Kindred more when you're not playing that much darkness stuff. So I think really to play Senna... I kind of think you have to play a lot of darkness stuff. And that's like not even discussing Viego, which Viego, as we know, is really, really powerful for five mana and Shadow Isles. So basically, I think like this whole five mana slot, if you just compare all the regions, not only just champions, but even followers, like I was saying, like Radiant Guardian and stuff, there are just so many good options at five mana that you have to be really strong these days at five mana. Um, and I, I don't know if Senna's that. I think Senna pairs great with, with Vagar. And you can make a darkness deck with those two. And I think that's going to be a pretty cool deck. But outside of that deck, I just find it pretty hard to find a spot for Senna. And so maybe I'm wrong here, but I'm going to be putting Senna... I'm going to be putting Senna at C tier to go along with Poppy. I'm going to be putting Senna under Vagar. Because I think that um, Vagar at the four mana spot, it's, it's a lot better for like your different control decks. You can you can pair Vagar with Karma and, and Viego and all sorts of other stuff besides just Senex. There's so many good five mana champions. Um, but I think Senna is gonna be kind of tied to Vagar. Now, could be wrong about that, but that's how that's how it 
kind of feel because of just how good five mana cards and five mana champions are. So Sen is going to be down in C tier. The next champion we had revealed was Tristana, another Bandle Yordle. Three mana, one, three quick attack, but I have plus one, plus zero for each multi-region ally you've summoned to this game. And when you've summoned a multi-region ally, grant it plus one, plus zero. So, um, so Tristana just like, you know, just has wherever it is, you know, has like that plus one, plus one for each multi-region ally. But then if you have Tristana play, then start summoning multi other multi-region allies you're granting those other ones plus one plus zero as well and then of course it gets the buff so like let's say you have a tristana in play and let's just say it's a one three okay so it's a three mana one three right now you played it round three you, you didn't play any multi-region allies round one or round two all right then you play poppy poppy w is multi-region and so when poppy comes down it gives tristana plus one plus zero so now tristana is a two three plus tristana gives poppy plus one plus zero so now now Poppy is a 5-3, and so when Poppy attacks and gives the plus 1, you know, Poppy will start at 5, then go up to 6, and give, you know, give everything 5 or less that plus 1, plus 1. So I think Poppy and Tristana can work pretty well together. And of course, you know, there's going to be a, a decent amount of multi-region allies also to play with Tristana. So I think Tristana is okay, but I, I don't think it's like a necessarily like an amazing champion. But I, I think that this... The whole like one three looking at that, I think that that's it kind of throws you off. Like it doesn't um, really show how good Tristana is. I think Tristana can be a good amount larger than that. Like it's not. It, this is a very easy uh, thing to do is just cast multi-region allies. Like you're gonna want to cast allies, right? Like you're gonna want to cast units, and so that's a very easy uh, thing to be doing. And each time you're doing that, you're buffing up Tristana. And if you have Tristana in play, then you're buffing up those allies as well. So this kind of just rewards you for playing just good cards in your deck, basically. That's what Tristana does. So I think it'll be fairly easily to turn Tristana into a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three quick attack, which that's what we talked about with Caitlyn. Like, that's why Caitlyn's way up here just being a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three quick attack. Um, it'll be pretty easy to have Tristana be that same body, but then also do a lot more. Also, it's, it only it levels up when you just summon 4-plus multi-region allies. That's a very easy level up, right? You're just going to want to play your allies, so very easy level up and then when tristana is leveled up you know now it gets that plus one plus one and then it, the only difference is whenever you're summoning a multi-region ally you not only grant it plus one plus zero but you're also granting it impact so you start giving everything impact so you can really see how tristana and poppy are going to work well together and how good this card is is really going to be how e how many good multi-region allies there are um you know, are there going to be good, like, one mana, two mana multi-region allies? Because you really want to, you know, have this to have a decent amount of power whenever you're playing it. And if you're playing it round three, you don't really want it to be just a one three. So I think that's the strength of, like, Caitlyn and Draven is that every time round three, you know, you can, like, not play anything on one, not play anything on two. You play Draven on three. You have, like, spell mana also to go along with this awesome Draven. Caitlyn kind of has that same play pattern. Tristana, not so much, because Tristana with that play pattern, you're looking at a 1-3. So I'm going to be having Tristana lower, um, but there there is some upside here. And if there are some other really good multi-region allies um, that curve out really well with like Tristana and Poppy and things like that, you know, it's going to be uh, making Tristana better than what I have. But I'm going to be putting Tristana here with Poppy as a C-tier champion, because there is like some downside. Also... You can really kind of only play Tristana in just a couple of types of decks, right? Because you have to build around the whole multi-region ally thing. Um, besides those kind of like aggressive decks that we were talking about, there's also like a new Bandlewood uh, landmark that's going to be uh, spitting out a whole bunch of different multi-region allies and things like that. And Tristana could be a pretty nice champion, like a mid-range champion in one of those style of decks as well. So it could fit in something like that too. But... Um, I have some hopes for like Poppy and Tristana. I think that they could be pretty good, but for now we'll have to kind of see. I'm going to be putting them over in the C tier. The next champion previewed was Scion from Noxus, seven mana champion. It starts as a three six with Overwhelm, but it does have and it also has the ability that whenever I'm discarded, grant your strongest ally Overwhelm, and just put a copy of me into your deck, or just place me into your deck. I guess that matters, the, the different wording there, because it's not an actual copy for a card like Victor or something like that. 
but it also has plus one plus zero for each card that you've discarded this game. So if you've discarded seven cards, it could then be a 10 and six. All right, so, so pretty cool champion here so far. It levels up when once you've discarded or summoned 35 plus power. All right, so what I really like about Scion, you know, we're gonna need to play it with a discard theme. Okay, so that does kind of narrow down the, the different types of decks that you're playing. You're gonna wanna play with the discard theme. But if you think about having like a seven mana champion in your deck, when you're you know playing and you start with your opening hand and you have like you know multiple scions you've drawn in your opening hand and then you get ran over by aggro because you have multiple of your seven mana card in hand that can be a, a pretty uh, a pretty big feels bad but what's really nice about scion is that if you get them in your opening hand and you have them early and you and you need other cards because you, know, you need to interact more with the opponent and everything like that and you can't have the seven mana card well you can simply use you can simply discard it you know, use it as a discard outlet, which, um, you know, that's what you're building your deck around. You're, you're playing a lot of discard stuff. Grant a strongest ally overwhelm, which, all right, that's fine. You know, it does a little something like that. But you just put another copy of it into your deck. And so, you know, just it just goes back in the deck. So, you know, it's a really nice card to discard. Because then whenever you need it later on, it will be in your deck for you to draw. So I actually pretty like, I really like that about Scion. That it's just like a, it's an expensive champion that like has some utility in the early game. If you think about like Malphite, a brilliant soul, Trindamir, you know, your other expensive champions, they don't have any utility in the early game. They're just gonna sit in your hand and sit in your hand and sit there and just wait until the end of the game and you know, round seven, round eight, and you like wait for you just to cast it and like hope that casting it's gonna be good enough. Well Scion, you know, you have like that you just have you have options and options are always important. You can discard it. So it levels up once you've discarded or summoned 35 plus power. And that doesn't sound like that difficult of a level up. Maybe, maybe it is. You know, if we think about Sivers leveled up when it's, once you've dealt 30 damage, you know, that's summon 35 power. That would be kind of tough, but it also counts discarding. And, and that's the thing about Scion is you're going to want to build around that discard. And so I, I think that could honestly be not that difficult to level up. And that's important because Scion is awesome when it's leveled up. And that's really where we're going to really see the strength of this champion. So it's not only an easy champion to discard early and make sure that your hand has good interaction and, and you can curve out well and things like that, even though you're playing the seven mana card. But once you play a leveled up Scion, which shouldn't be that difficult to level up, I don't think. But once you do, this card is awesome. So 10, 6, Overwhelm. And then it has this Last Breath. Last Breath Summon Scion Returned. And still has that discard ability. So Scion Returned comes back in. Last breath, you summon this. It's a 10-4 Overwhelm that's ephemeral that also has when I'm summoned to rally. So you just get an additional attack with this 10-4 Overwhelm and with any other allies you have in play at the time. That's pretty awesome. So I'm, I'm really excited about Scion. I think this is a really, really well-designed champ. Um, Noxus has some of the best design champs. They do. Um, this is an, another one that, as far as Noxus goes, if you think about our, we had the original five champions in Noxus, and since then we've gotten two new ones of Riven and LeBlanc, like since the original five. And those are just kind of like the same champions as Draven, right? They're just like three mana champions that like attack and attack effectively. And so like, that's kind of what Noxus has just kind of been turning into, right? It's just like play aggressive stuff and attack. And, you know, that's a, what, a lot of what Noxus has, but there's other stuff that Noxus can do. And so I really like that now we're getting an even new archetype of Noxus, like a big discard deck. Like there's the small discard aggro, but now we're getting a big discard deck. And that's just really cool. So I'm glad that that's just going to add a, a new element to the metagame, just a, a new style of deck. So I really like this champion a lot. But as far as like how effective it's going to be, we're still talking about a seven mana champion and we're still talking about the limitations of being a discard champion and you know probably only there's probably going to be like one good scion deck but probably not like a big variety of scion decks to be honest um could be wrong about that but that's what i'm thinking but so as far as placing it in the tiers i'm going to put scion up at b tier i think it's kind of similar to, to vagar up there um i think it can be just a good strong champion i think there probably will be a pretty good scion deck and, and i think it's a good card like you got i know it costs a lot of mana but again you can discard it early so it's not a it feels bad if it's in your in your hand it's not that difficult of a level up and the leveled up scion is amazing with that last breath 
Scion Return. I think that that's really, really good. So there we go. We got B-tier champion here with Scion, a very interesting champion. The next champion revealed was Nami. Nami was 3 mana, 2, 3 with a tune. When you cast a spell, grant plus 1, plus 0 to the weakest other ally that isn't a mobile. That's kind of weird they have that <laughs> little thing in there, but you know, I guess that makes sense if you want to put Nami with uh, like Monkey Idol. All right, so we're um, every spell that you cast, you're granting another ally. Like whatever your weakest ally is, you're granting it plus one, plus zero. So that's a pretty nice, you know, like permanent grant on power. Like that, that's pretty nice. Good, good ability there. And it's leveled up whenever you've gained a seven plus spell mana this game. Now, of course, Nami itself has a tune, so that's gaining one spell mana. And of course, if you just don't spend mana, you gain the spell mana, right? Like it's it's not too difficult to gain seven plus spell mana this game, especially if you play a lot of things with a tune. When you do level up Nami, you have a, you know, it gets the plus one, plus one, but then every spell you cast, you grant plus two, plus one to the weakest other ally. Like that is amazing. Plus two, plus one permanent grant for just every spell. That is pretty awesome. And so Nami, I think, is going to be a really strong champion because it's easy to cast spells. And there are a lot of good spells to be casting, as we know, and a lot of ways to play like free spells and like zero mana spells. And you create spells be each round with like your victors and stuff. There's there's a lot of different things to do with that. And so granting your weakest ally plus two plus one, you get some very large allies very fast. And we're talking about Bilgewater. Bilgewater is a region that has fizz and has other good elusives and already pairs well with good elusives as we know with like fizz decks and so nami can can work perfectly with fizz and just other elusive decks and have them grant them permanent plus two plus one uh, which i think is gonna be pretty strong and we're talking about a champion that originally is three mana but it does a tune you do get one of your mana back with that spell mana so we're you're kind of only net down two mana for this champion that has this kind of potential to it. So I think Nami is gonna be one of the strongest champions in this expansion. Yeah, it can it can go a lot of different places. There's a ton of different decks that want you to cast spells and then grow your allies while you're casting the spells. Um, and so I think that it could be pretty good. People are excited about Nami with like Piltoverns on, with, like I said, with like Victor and, and um, you know, where you're creating spells like like that, um, and or uh, Ballistic Bot, you know, Victor Ballistic Bot, that kind of stuff, creating those spells for free. Or even Ionia, where you're going to be playing like Eye the Dragon, Lee Sin, that kind of stuff. Even a Karma deck, um, very easy to have a lot of spells in that kind of deck. And, and if it's with like a Lee Sin, you can have like Nami and Lee Sin together, and it doesn't, it doesn't have itself. But you, so you could be buffing up your Lee Sin, plus two plus one for every spell and y'all know with lisa and you get a lot of spells to play um so yeah i think i think this is going to be a strong champion it can fit in like a, an aggressive elusive deck i think it could fit in a control deck it just kind of fits in a lot of spots um this if there's going to be an s tier champion in this expansion i think this will be it i'm kind of inclined to put it at a tier to begin with, like S tier champions are going to be champions that are going to be like top end part of the metagame and everything. And, and honestly, maybe maybe Nami is that actually. So you know what? I was planning on putting Nami at A tier, but I'm kind of talking myself into it. I think let's let's go ahead and buff bump Nami up to S tier. I think this could be a champion that is in a lot of different decks and some tier one decks. And basically your S tier champions are like the champions that you're thinking about while you're building your other decks of like, okay, I got to have answers to Nami and, and that kind of stuff. You know, like you're thinking, okay, I got to have answers to Lee Sin, I got to have answers to Draven, you know, like that kind of stuff. Like those are the ty type of champions, Sivir, obviously Action, Viego. Those are your S tier champions that are the champions that you're considering when you're building your decks. And I think Nami could get up there. Bilgewater is just a really good region right now with Make It Rain going down to two mana. Um, yeah, it's a good support region, right, for other regions. I think Nami's a good support champion for um, a variety of decks. So let's put Nami up to S tier. I think it's gonna be the best champion in the expansion. Then we finished out with two more champions that want you to destroy your own landmark. So Zareth, four mana, three, three. Uh, when an allied landmark is destroyed, deal one to the weakest enemy, and it levels up once you've destroyed four allied landmarks this game. 
Okay, so as far as that goes, it's actually really easy to destroy your own landmarks and destroy allied landmarks. Think about Rockhopper putting in Roiling Sands or um, Unraveled Earth, how that puts in two Roiling Sands and draws a card. As far as I know, whenever you have a Roiling Sands in play, your opponent plays a unit, you destroy your Roiling Sands, give, give that unit vulnerable. That should count as destroying an allied landmark this game. And so that's an incredibly easy way to destroy your own landmarks and just destroy landmarks in general. And so when you have level one Xerath, each time you do that, you're dealing one to the weakest enemy. Also, Countdown. You play Ancient Preparations or um, Preservarium. You, know, you play those kind of cards that uh, you know just count down in like two rounds. They'll destroy themselves, and then you're going to have uh, dealing damage to the weakest enemy. So if you think about like Talia decks, where you're like playing a lot of landmarks with Talia, think about like how many of those landmarks they just destroy themselves in just like a round, you know, either right away basically or in a round or two. And so it's going to be a very, very easy Colossus to level up because that's basically like how Talia needs you to see you play five landmarks. You're basically destroying four landmarks whenever you're having a Talia level up anyway. And Talia is a pretty easy champion to level up. So I think Xerath won't be too bad to level up. And plus, you're dealing one damage to the weakest enemy all the time. Like, that's pretty sweet. You know, you can ping off some different blockers and stuff and just get rid of get rid of things with Xerath. That's that's pretty good. So Xerath, of course, is an Ascended Champion also. I should mention that. So it has three levels and gets to the third level once you've restored the Sun Disk. But the second level, after, like I said, pretty easy to level up, is going to be like that 4-4 now that... Every time you have an allied landmark be destroyed, you're dealing three damage to the weakest enemy. Now we're talking. Now each one is three damage to the enemy. That will mow down your opponent's board pretty fast. That That's pretty awesome. So I'm, I'm excited about Xerath with that. Like I think that could be really strong. Now, if you are able to restore the Sun Disk with Xerath in play, which I think is going to be really, really difficult. We've seen like the Sun Disk decks are not necessarily the best. It's usually... It's probably better for a champion like this to have two regions, you know, like Shurima plus maybe like Targon, where you can get some extra landmarks that are easy to destroy in Targon to go along with, you know, maybe Talia and Xerath together. But if you are able to restore the Sun Disk, that happens somehow. And, you know, you have your level three Xerath. I just, I don't expect this to happen very often. But if you do, round start, deal five to the weakest enemy and the enemy nexus. Just every round, five. And if enemy would be would die, just go ahead and obliterate it instead. Like, yeah, level three Xerath is insane. But of course, all of the Ascended Champions are insane on the level three. But I think this is going to be a pretty strong champion because it's real easy to destroy your own landmarks. And once you get this Xerath dealing three every single time you're destroying a landmark, that's going to be a pretty powerful effect, I think. And um, so, yeah, so I think Xerath's going to be pretty good. Now, it does... You know, it, it can't go everywhere, right? Like, you're going to have to play it with your landmarks and things like that. But I think it's going to be a nice, strong champion. I think as far as, like, where to put it, it's not, you know, going to be, like, an S tier all over the place. I don't even think it's really necessarily an A tier champion because we're talking about, like, a, you know, just a 3, 3 for 4. There's no keyword, so this thing isn't very good in combat. That's a big downside. It costs 4 mana, and it really doesn't attack or block well at all. So we're going to go ahead and put Xerath B tier. I think that's where, uh, I think that's like a, a nice little spot for it. I think that's where it could be could go. But yeah, I think that that's a, a pretty well-designed champion there. And the final champion that we just found out today, just a little bit ago, was Ziggs. Ziggs is another multi-region Yordle. Uh, we got Shurima and Bandle. Three mana, three, four. So Riven body. Uh, Ziggs has attack, deal one to my blocker and the enemy Nexus. Pretty nice little attack ability there now if like let's say they don't block zigs at all i think it still does the one to the enemy nexus as far as i know so to attack for four so that's that's not bad at all um so this is kind of like a good aggressive card just a three mana three four attack deal one to the blocker enemy nexus that's a good card to put in aggressive decks shurima has a lot of great aggressive stuff could go well in a, in a good aggressive deck for shurima however the level up. Level up says you've destroyed four plus allied landmarks this game. Now, I did just talk about with Xerath how that's not a difficult level up to achieve. However, if we're making a deck where that's our plan is destroying landmarks and, and that kind of stuff, we don't really want a Ziggs in that style of deck because, 
you know, Ziggs is just a good attacking card. In that style of deck where you're destroying your own landmarks, you're you're probably playing a little bit of like a slower mid range style game. And I think you're gonna want like your like how good Talia is. Talia is amazing, and Zareth's really good. I think you're gonna want those style of champions, even like Malphi to the top end. And I don't know if Ziggs really fits in there. Let's check out leveled up Ziggs though. So leveled up Ziggs, he of course gets the plus one plus one, and then whenever it attacks, it does two to the blocker in the enemy nexus. Okay, all right, so we get an extra point of damage in there. And then every time an allied landmark is destroyed, you deal two to the enemy nexus. So it turns that deck into being much more aggressive. So now. If you're playing like Zareth and Ziggs together, for example, and then you're destroying landmarks, you're doing three to the weakest ally, weakest enemy, and two to the enemy nexus for each one. So you're uh, basically turning it into like a machine gun on their nexus, and that's that's fine. That's good. That's there's nothing wrong with that at all. That's pretty strong. That's good. However, it's just is that better than what like Atalia can provide? I don't know. the The thing about Sharima is Shurima has amazing three cost units already. You got the best non-champion in the game at Merciless Hunter at three mana in Shurima. And then there's there's just other ones. There's a new three mana Shurima card that, that's pretty good. You have your Xenotype Researchers and and other stuff. Um, there's, there's just gonna be a lot of competition at this mana cost and in this region where it's like, is, is Ziggs better than some of those other options? Yeah. But is Ziggs so much better than some of those options you'd rather play that instead of playing a different champion? You know, maybe not. And so I, I think that Ziggs is going to struggle to find a home. If Ziggs had a different level up condition, I, I would like it a lot more. I think it could be a nice card to go pair with, you know, a Renekton or or um, just like an Innoxus Shreema aggro. Or, you know, I think it could be a, a cool aggressive champion. Like three mana, three, four is a good body. This attack ability is a good ability. But just wanting to put it with a landmark deck, it, I don't know, it kind of doesn't really fit with the, the landmark decks. So unfortunately, Ziggs is going to be our level D champion. Again, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I know last time we did this during the Sharima expansion, I didn't think Nasus was going to be that good. And I had Nasus as a D champion and Nasus ended up being amazing. So, uh, you know, we'll see if I'm, I'm wrong about Ziggs, but I, I'm just not very high on uh, this on this one. So chat saying like Ziggs with Gangplank to, um, you know, ha double that up. I mean, that's that's pretty good. But then, like, how are we leveling up Ziggs in a Ziggs Gangplank deck? I don't And is that is Ziggs better than other champions that we could play in that kind of deck? I don't know. So um, I think that Ziggs is going to kind of miss the mark. Uh, while it's like the stats are good, the stats are good and the ability is good. And so maybe it will fit in somewhere just because of that. But just zigs with landmarks. I don't know. I'm not I'm not convinced of it yet. So there we go. We got a good variety of champions. We're, um, and we got, you know, a, kind of just a good power level of champions. You know, like whenever we just saw Action and Viego, those were the last two champions that were released. And both those champions, you know, just reading them like this, like first time before seeing them played, they really looked incredibly powerful. Both champions, even Action for all the stuff it did for two mana, and Viego, obviously, with the um, Encroaching Mist. Encroaching Mist looked silly. None of these champions look like that. And so I'm, I'm excited about that. I think that these are just a, a healthier power level of champions. Are they going to dominate the metagame? Are they going to be at the top of the metagame? Are they going to see a ton of play? Maybe not. You know, that 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 could be, that, that answer could be no. But I think that these are good champions for the game. And they also bring in a lot of unique aspects. And I like that. It's not just, they're not all just like zigs, like where you just play them and attack. You know, like Scion and Zareth, those are, completely different types of champions you got two new good control champions with both of these darkness champions when paired together um i'm really excited about the darkness decks i think those could be pretty cool and then you have um nami nami looks to be probably the best nami also looks to maybe be the most annoying to play against right because it's it's those kind of decks with like fizz and a ton of spells and elusives those are not always necessarily the most fun to play against so we'll have to see how how it does but that's still you know bring a unique aspect um and you know a unique champion to the game you have more traps with caitlin those those uh traps are pretty fun 
uh, to play. Like puff cap decks are really fun to play, and I'm expecting you know like Teemo Caitlyn decks to be very fun to play and play against. And I think that that's going to be a good you know just another unique aspect of Legends of Runeterra that they're kind of uh, improving upon with the traps. I think that that's a very well designed card. And then you have Tristana and Poppy down here. They're going to be more of your attack champions. Um, but they're, you know, pretty decent Yordles and, and uh, you know, sizing and stuff. And we'll have to see the synergies between those two and just other uh, new cards to go along with them. They're a little bit harder to judge uh, to see what kind of synergies offer with, um, with Bandle City uh, entering. So overall, very, very happy with the nine champions that they made. I'm very excited to play all nine champions. Yeah, I'm, I'm just excited about all of these. I think that they're again just a, a really well um really well made champions there was none of these that i thought oh man this isn't very well made i, I i'm very happy to play all of these and i'm glad they're all entering so this is what we're going to do tomorrow we're going to build our decks with the new champions for the you know the next week and and uh you know have a lot of fun with all of the new cards all right so those of y'all watching later on youtube uh, hit that like button and leave those comments let me know which of these champions you think that maybe i i have up too high or too low and why uh, i know i think senna is probably the one that i'm lower on than a lot of people i think a lot of people think that senna is better than what i think i just think there's too much competition at five mana and in shadow isles and that it's going to pair well with vagar and the darkness decks but besides that um, i'm not very high on senna in other stuff so yeah, let me leave those leave those comments. But then also in the comment section, besides that, let me know what kind of decks you want me to play. Like, what should I build tomorrow? What should I play on you know Thursday, Friday? Like, what kind of decks? What kind of combinations do y'all want to see? There's some obvious ones with you know like building like the darkness kind of deck and, and stuff like that. But you know like what other kind of unique combinations do you think could could work out well and could be really unique and fun to see on stream? Just let me know and I'll go ahead and build them. All right, but that's gonna be it here for the new champ tier list beyond the bandwood coming tomorrow so be excited about that uh, but for next time thank you so much for watching and i'll see you for the next video